Have you ever wondered how good you are at driving? Most of us consider ourselves to be better than average drivers, but statistically, half of us must be below average. Now, that's a classic example of what behavioral scientists call overconfidence bias. Here's Konstantinos Antonio from Warwick Business School. The way it manifests itself in uh, decision-making overall is that people tend to think that they are better in doing a task than what they really are. So this could be you know, your sense of humor, your driving ability, and also has a big impact on investment decisions. Now, how it can influence the decisions? It could be the case that you over or you over rely on information that is not really information. So you trade too much on the back of news or rumors that you analyze and think that there is some value, there is some signal there that could help you actually uh, make money. But in fact, there is nothing there. It's just noise. So overconfidence will make you think that there is something of value there, but in fact, there is nothing. So what ends up happening is that you trade more than what you should trade. Though there's some disagreement as to why human beings are so prone to overconfidence, it's generally believed that it has something to do with evolution. Characteristics that were helpful to our distant ancestors are not always so helpful today. As far as survival goes, perhaps overconfidence is a good thing. But in the domain of investments, it is not a good thing. So uh, why people are overconfident is because you know, we tend to like to have an optimistic view of ourselves. And that is a good trait to have in general, you know. So if you just, you know, go through your life thinking that you are not good enough and being, you know, you're just pessimistic about your own ability and um, it's not going to, to lead to good outcomes in general. So overconfidence is a, is, is a good trait, I think, for people uh, to have. But in financial decision making, perhaps it is, um, it is not so helpful. So, is there anything that investors can do about overconfidence? Thankfully, there is. The most important thing is to acknowledge that we tend to be overconfident. So, to be skeptical with the decisions that we take. So, I would suggest, you know, so you, you make some decision, okay, I'm going to buy this particular asset. Play devil's advocate on your own decision and try to look for information that would go against this decision that you took. Can you find this information? If you can't find it, then think about it. You know, is this something that I should have considered and I did not consider? Or, you know, and if you don't find any information, then, you know, it, it gives you confidence that it's a, it, it was perhaps, you know, a good, sensible decision. And if you suspect you are being overconfident, the best advice is to err on the side of caution. By simply staying invested in low-cost index funds, you can expect better-than-average returns after costs in the long run.